Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will not rise them up a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks the name of the other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God the Father from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge, since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So, by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat, so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples went into Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Well, I, I, have not, uh, I have not said this, but I think I'm safe to say it right now. John Guthrie, you are the sickest person I have ever seen in 20 years of ministry to be absolutely fine and sitting right there on that pew, and I thank God for it. You know, when, when we prayed in that hospital room, we made a deal with God, right? We, 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 we said to him the same thing that the prophets always said. God, you, you bring her through this, and we will not stop telling the rest of the world what you have done for us, and we will do it. We will do it. Well, y'all, last week we jumped uh, back into the Gospel of St. Mark. Mark is very different from the other three uh, Gospels. You can, you, know, you can open up the Gospel of Luke, and you can hear some of the most uh, impressive things that, that Luke writes about. The Gospel of Luke and, and the Acts of the Apostles, which, which Luke wrote as well, are just full of all of the dramatic stories. You know, Luke, by his own admission, was not there to see all of this. Uh, Luke was born well after the ascension of Jesus, and he never met Jesus on this earth. The, the first few verses in Luke say that Luke has been hired. He's been hired by a man named Theophilus, Theophilus, which means lover of God, uh, to compile the stories that he heard about Jesus, the stories that were, were going around. Sometimes, I've said this before, sometimes I cannot help but think that Luke was paid by the word because his gospel is... <laughs> It's th thank you, thank you. His, his gospel was three times longer than, uh, than any of the other gospels, and then he went on to write a part two uh, in, in Acts. But the, the gospel of Luke has a lot of details that we don't get anywhere else in the Bible. Uh, and I can kind of relate to Luke. I love to tell a good story, and every time I tell it, I think of a way that it will be better if I, if I tell it that way. So they tend to get better and better with every retelling, that I, and I add more and more details to it. Uh, but Mark was just the opposite of that. He was just the opposite of Luke. First of all, although he was a, a very young man, probably a little boy, Mark was there. Mark was there to see it all. A lot of the biblical scholars uh, think that that one weird verse in the Garden of Gethsemane that talks about the little boy in the loincloth, that that was actually St. Mark. Mark is saying, and I know these things to be true uh, because I was there to see it with my own eyes. And something that you'll notice, if you'll sit down to read the Gospel of St. Mark, and I hope that you do, it, it's super short, uh, you can read it in a, in a, you know, in a, in a sitting, uh, that there's not a lot of what we would call the supernatural in Mark. There's, there's just not a whole lot of it. There's a lot in Luke. Luke is much more descriptive about angels and signs and wonders and, and, wonders and all of that, but, but not so much in Mark. Mark is a guy... And he is reporting what he saw, just the facts, ma'am. Uh, a, a lot of biblical scholars believe that he very possibly was the scribe for St. Peter, which I like that theory a lot. I don't know if it's true, but I like it a lot. Uh, by the time Mark was written down, Peter was getting old, and he was a fisherman. So he probably could not read, or probably could not read or write. Very doubtful. And so the theory is that Mark 
did that for him, did that for St. Peter. We have no way of knowing, but it, it's kind of, kind of like Mark being the gospel of St. Peter, and I like, that, I like that theory. Mark is a simple, Peter is a simple man, Mark is a simple man. If I were writing the gospel, it would probably look, probably look more like Luke's. I would try to put all of the spectacular stuff in there. It would be full of flowery details, but, but not Mark. That's not what he did. He very unapologetically gives it to us as the events that he saw and nothing else. And for that reason, when he talks about things that are not of this world, like angels or demons or miracles, you better sit up and pay attention to those things because he uses, he talks about those things very sparingly. So last week, we began talking about, you know, it's, it's been a good, it's either been six or nine years since I have preached, it must be six, since I preached from the Gospel of Mark. I went back this week to look, and I was preaching on Paul three years ago. I was teaching about, preaching about not eating meat in the, uh, that was sacrificed to idols. Uh, and, and I'm so glad to be back in Mark because I get to, to pick on those old Markan themes that I like so much. And last week we started talking about one of them, which is the difference between the people who get it and the people who don't get it. That's a big one in Mark. Uh, and I gave a list of the kinds of people who normally don't get it in the, the Gospel of Mark. It's usually the church people that don't get it in, in Mark. Uh, and then I gave a list of the folks who often do get it, and it's the ones you wouldn't expect. It's the outliers, the sinners, the, 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 the beggars, the blind, the sick, uh, what the hymn was talking about this morning. And among those who understand Jesus, who know beyond a shadow of a doubt who he is, 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 is a, a, a category that shocks us, and that is the demons. The demons knew exactly who Jesus was. They knew him at a thousand paces, and they were terrified, scared to death. Jesus was teaching in the synagogue one day, and people were marveling at the authority with which he taught. They had never known a preacher or a teacher as gifted as this man. People are flocking to the synagogue to hear what he has to say. And as always, when people start flocking to the church, it makes Satan very uncomfortable. So finally, a man with what the Bible calls an unclean spirit cries out, not in his own voice, but in the voice of his demon. And he says, what are you here for, Jesus? Have you come to destroy us? We know who you are. That's a very important verse in the Bible. We know who you are. And Jesus says, be quiet. And you leave that man alone. And like that, the demon was gone. I love how Jesus is always telling his demons to be quiet. Zip it, demon. Uh, in fact, he tells everyone who does not understand him to be quiet. And I like that. Don't you wish we could tell people that? Don't you wish we could tell people who don't really understand the church or don't really understand Jesus to just quit talking? Stop talking about us. You're driving us all crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. People for years and years have called this thing that Jesus did, they've called that the messianic secret. And they've struggled to understand why after Jesus healed people and worked miracles, he would sometimes say, now look, go, go on and don't be talking about this to everybody, please. Please do not be telling people all about this. And I don't think it's really uh, that big of a secret, this messianic secret. Uh, who do we want to represent us as a church or as a community? Do we want those who understand what it is we're doing here? Do we want those who understand the mission of Christ? Do we want those who really know what our focus here on earth is? Or do we want to be represented by those who have no earthly idea why we're here doing this? or don't understand what it is to follow Jesus. You know, you can bet that the people who can't focus on what it is we're doing as Christians will be very uncomfortable in a church, and they'll go away, and do we let them speak for us? They, go out, they will go out of their way to misrepresent us and to cause discord. The Bible calls that sowing the seeds of dissension. And one of the greatest dangers facing the church today is that people are not learning about the church from church people. They aren't learning about the Christianity from the people who understand Christianity. They're learning about it by listening to the people who don't get what we're doing. 
The news media is full of it. The, inter the internet, the internet is just full of people who will tell you all about the church, though they've never darkened the church door a day in their life. And we had better not be content to let them speak for us. We, we cannot allow others to speak on our behalf. Jesus didn't do it. He said, go away and don't talk about this to anybody, right? You don't get it yet? I'll let you know when you can talk. And we can't do that either. And don't you listen to your own demons either, because they're never telling you the truth. But we'll talk more about that next week. The man in the synagogue was there for all the right reasons. He had been drawn by the Holy Spirit to hear the preachings of Jesus Christ, to focus on Christ and his saving grace, and his demons absolutely could not stand it that he was there for that. And when they tried to take control of the situation, Jesus ordered them to be quiet. He said, you're not going to get in the way of my mission. You close your mouth. There is no demon that can get in the way of what Jesus was doing because he would not allow it. It's exactly the same for us. We, we all have demons. We have demons that try to speak for us, and we have demons that try to speak to us. And no matter what form your demon takes, we, we simply cannot give, him tr give those demons traction over the things in our life. Tragic losses that continue to haunt us, abuse, failed marriages, things that have been done to us, things that we have done, things that we have left undone, those demons have to be silenced. Well, they have to be taken care of first, and then they have to be silenced. You know, we, we move on from those things. We heal from those things. If we need to, we confess, we repent of those things, but then we leave them alone. We move toward the light of Jesus Christ. A favorite priest of mine says, the darkness is not afraid of you. The darkness is afraid of Jesus. That's why we stick close to him. And that's the truest thing I've ever heard. Every now and then someone will ask me if I believe in a real live Satan, if I believe in a real live devil. And as a matter of fact, I do. He's only too obvious in this world. Look around and you'll see him if you're looking. Satan is real and demons are real. And we know this because Jesus said that they were. He said it this morning in, in this morning's gospel. And the more we concentrate on moving toward Jesus Christ and growing the kingdom of God, the more Satan is not going to like that. So I issue you a challenge. When you see the demons crop up, when you hear the demons crop up, when you feel the demons crop up, tell them to be quiet. Zip it. And then be about the mission of the church. You know, Jesus doesn't get bogged down. He says, eh, that's enough from you. And then he moves on. That's it. That's all he does. Jesus, as he always does, gives us the perfect example. When they show up trying to cause a problem, trying to draw attention, he says, stop it, and then he just moves along. Don't give them the attention that they want. When they show up reminding you of the things from the past, whether those are in the past of the church, or in your past, or in the past of your, your relationships, or whatever it is, when they remind you of the past, things that God has long forgotten, when they show up trying to misrepresent you, when they show up trying to convince you that you are not strong enough, or you are not faithful enough, or that God is not able, just turn your back to them and turn your face to the Son of God and then be about the work he's given us to do and you will be surprised at how well that works every time. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, 
for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures and ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful to the church of your word and sacraments. We pray especially for the bishop and council, finance and property and standing committees of the Diocese of Tennessee and the Anglican Church of Southern Africa. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. We pray especially for Mary, Dick, Diane, Mary Jane, Betty, Drew, Mac, Patty, Ann, Carla, Rick, May, Elle, Ham, Katie, James, Gianna, Clay, Scott, Angie and Alyssa, Rich, Kay, Janice, Thomas, Martin, Bill, Will, Adam, and Arlene, and Colson. We pray also for those in service for our country, especially Douglas, Jeffrey, Stephen, Cameron, Jack, John, Kurt, Christy, Christopher, Danny, Tyler, Jacob, Maggie, William Patrick, David, and Allie. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let my perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in everlasting life. 
Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. All right, y'all join us for TGIF this Friday. Thank goodness it's fellowship, uh, which takes place all in the hallways and all around out here. It's always really nice. Bring an appetizer with you to share if you want one. Bring something exciting to drink if you'd like that. And we, it is for no other reason that we just like to get together and, and hang out on Fridays. And that's what we, not every Friday, but that's what we do on TGIF Fridays. It's 6.30 this Friday night. Uh, and it'll take place all right here. Y'all, come on, we'll, uh, we'll have a good time. And then, you know, this Louisiana priest takes Ash Wednesday seriously, and so he takes the party beforehand seriously too. There is no reason to have the party if you're not gonna take Wednesday seriously, but we do, so we take Tuesday pretty seriously too. So Mardi Gras is coming up February the 13th. Frank, what, around 6.30? Uh, around 6.30 on Mardi Gras. We always have a big uh, do in the parish hall. It is always packed. It is always very well attended. We always have a good, good time. I'll cook a gigantic pot of gumbo. We usually keep it Louisiana themed, but it does not have to, you, you know, if you don't, if you don't make jambalaya or, uh, or etouffee, that's okay. Bring something else to share. Uh, Jackie is no longer with us, but I think Mally said she's supplying wine for, for their table, right? Where's Mally? Where'd Mally go? So I think, I, think Miley's, I think Miley's got that table uh, covered. Jackie was always the wine table, but Miley's going to take over that for us this, uh, this year. It's always a good time. We cook all day, uh, and sometimes we cook two days beforehand. So if you like to come up and cook, uh, come up and do that. We chop vegetables and have a, a great time, and that will be coming up in just a few weeks. Confirmation classes always are coming. Now, the bishop's visit is later, a lot later this year. It's earlier. When is it this year? Oh, it's early. It's a lot earlier. April the 28th. It's usually in August. It's April the 28th this year, if that, uh, if that changes any of your plans. So we've got to get on the confirmation class uh, pretty quickly. We've got a ton of people signed up for it already, so it's a good year if you've been waiting to kind of fade into to anonymity in doing the confirmation class. This is a great year to, to do that. We've got adults and youth uh, all ready to go. If you are interested in the confirmation class, there are little sheet, little slips to sign your name on right there on the table outside the glass doors, uh, and you, you just slide them into the little box that looks like a book, and we'll, uh, we'll handle the rest. We will be in touch with you. Now, I have a big announcement uh, this morning, and that is after uh, at least 15 years of some of the most dedicated service to this parish that I know, Dr. Hildegard Cox has decided to retire. Uh, gasp, I, I know. Um, and I want to tell you that I have never known uh, a more dedicated or faithful or gracious or loyal employee of a church in all of my days. Uh, she wants to stay with us through the search process until we can find uh, the right fit, if, we, if that takes a while. Now, if it takes longer, she does have some plans coming up, right? Uh, she, she would actually like to be in retirement, and they do have some, some big plans coming up. Um, I, I, know, I, know, I know many of you know uh, the Hildegard's story of her time here, uh, but I will tell you that she saw this parish through the darkest history that it has had when the congregation dwindled down to almost nothing. They cut her salary in half, and then they cut it again after that, and she stayed, uh, and she stayed, and she stayed, and she has been with us in lockstep every step of the way, and I love her, and I thank her with all of my heart.
So we will make plans for searches and things like that, but it is not the time for that. Right now is just the time to be thankful for somebody who has hung in with us through very difficult times. Uh, are there any birthdays today? None. How about anniversaries? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice unto God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin, into sin and become a subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you 
and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.